now we will be bringing on Heinrich. So for his article in the first issue of Rolling Inspiration, Heinrich wrote about the dangers of Dr. Google. So essentially he took a, he looked at the dangers of misinformation, information being misrepresented, um, you know, kind of fake news, but also just getting information that you don't understand and the impact of that. So um, Heinrich, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I am glad you were able to join us. For those who don't know, Heinrich was stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah, I almost did this from the car. Yeah, we're very glad that was not the case. It would not have been the most safest way of going about it. Um, so I don't know, I think let's just quickly jump in. Um, I, I'm happy for us to just jump directly into the questions. So in your article, you alluded to the fact that some information online is misleading or half-truths. What is the best way for individuals to determine what information they can trust when reading? Yes, um, yeah. that's a hard question, but I think, I think the best thing that you can do is you can start by, you know, if you see, say for instance, we, do, we talk about prosthesis and you see um, a patient wearing, say for instance, a prosthetic foot. You cannot just look at that and decide this is going to work for you. You got to look at all the other variables. You must really compare yourself to that patient. So you have to compare yourself. Um, uh, amputee has got a stump. Uh, compare yourself to the amputee. Uh, do you have the same stump as it as is? Do you have the same skin coverage on the stump? Do you have um, the length or the clearance for those components? Um, do you have the activity level and the stability and the core for, for, for those active components. Um, so, and, and you cannot really do that, can you? Because you don't know so much about that patient. So this in fact should tell you how much you can trust that information because if you can't go, even, even financially, um, your access to a prosthetist. Uh, so you can't compare yourself to, to, to that patient. So, you know, this give you kind of an indication of how much you can trust the information if you can't compare yourself. And then you can also see who is selling the product. Um, uh, is it a supplier which is selling the product that deals in components? His main job is to sell components. Or is it the practitioner that's actually going to treat you? So if this person that is saying that is a great product, if he's never going to treat you, then, uh, then most probably it's not you know, the greatest idea to trust that um, 100%. Definitely, and I think what you're pointing to as well is the the motivation for promoting the product is going to be very different. Um, obviously, your prosthetist is going to want to do it to make sure that they give you the best possible option in terms of going forward, whereas a, a company will do it simply because they would like to sell the product. So you need yes. to also be aware of where are you getting it from, um, that information from, and then also um, making sure that it's, it's from someone you can trust. Um, so you mentioned that patients should speak to more than one specialist. Why do you recommend speaking to more than one specialist? Obviously, if it's possible. Well, yeah, yeah, that's quite a statement you said that me. But uh, then, um, what, what, yes, you, you, should, you should kind of trust your instinct. If there's something, if there's any red lights that goes on, for instance, there's, um, there's an exuberant cost uh, for a prosthetic, for, 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 for something, for a product. Or, or if it is too good to be true, if it's too good to be true, then you know the saying is it usually is. Um, ask, ask your practitioner about this rehabilitation protocol. Uh, uh, An actual fact, in the next issue, we wrote about the, the, the rehabilitation protocol, um, and and the practitioner should be able to to really elaborate and tell you that your if you're a new MPT, your three to six month protocol treatment protocol, what is it going to entail? If there's nothing like that, so don't worry, we're going to fit you with a prosthesis, it's going to be lucky and you're going to walk in a week. Then, um, although it's possible, it is, it is really not, you know, not how it usually works. Um, so yes, uh, trust your instincts. If, it's, uh, if there's any red lights, um, then maybe ask somebody else. And um, Yes, ask about the treatment protocol. Uh, it should be about a three to six month treatment protocol for a new amputee. Great. 
Thanks, Heinrich. And I think that's so important is like, if it, like you mentioned as well, if it feels too good to be true, it probably is. And then it's a good idea to go double check and make sure, you know, from someone else, does this make sense? Um, and then also in your article, you discuss what a good practitioner would do, but finding a good practitioner can be hard. Um, how would you recommend people go about finding someone they can trust? Yes, uh, um, you're an amputee, so maybe it's a good idea to look at the, the, the final end users, the guys that have that used this specific prosthetist or supplier. So it's a good idea to speak to other amputees. Um, you know, if you can, if you can find or hear, you could even ask the practitioner. You know, but if you could, if you could speak to amputees that was treated by a specific, um, by a specific prosthetist, and um, yes, also the allied workers. You can ask to talk to your doctor, but you can also so ask to the allied workers. The doctors do the amputations, and then a lot of the times the doctors leave the rehabilitation and the rest of it up to the other allied workers for choices. They will leave it in the hands of the physiotherapist or the occupational therapist or even the sister in the ward to assign a prosthetist to you. So yes, speak to the, to the other allied workers because they are the ones that, that um, work with the prosthetist all the time and they should have quite a good insight into um, the way he practices. Definitely, and um, maybe you can just mention as well, I don't know if this is the case, but it could possible be possible for them to maybe recommend more than one prosthetist who you can then go and meet with and then pick someone, is that possible? Yes, yes, that is possible. That yeah. is all awesome. But you know, the thing is, you have to realize that, that usually, usually, um, usually a certain, a surgeon will work with a certain prosthetist. And um, yes, so, you know, you could, you, you could trust where your, your, your surgeon refers you to because he, he's worked with this prosthetist for a long time. So yes, uh, look at your, ask, ask, ask your doctor and, and ask your, your other allied health workers, your physios and your occupational therapists. Great, thank you. And then, um... I just wanted to know, uh, because so a lot of what your article is about is also just being wary of the information that you get online. Um, but specifically, is there any fake news currently out there in the world that you know of that um, amputees need to be aware of um, or be just careful of believing everything that they see? <laughs> yes. Um... Look, news that you see or hear, it might, it might be true or fake. <clears throat> so, you know, if you a newly amputated person, you, you know, you don't really know, you know, what this is all about. You don't know the field, you know nothing. So you are kind of left in the hands of other people. Um, you're going to see information which is true, information which is false. If, 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 if you see something that we go back to, to, it's almost, you know, we go back to what we said earlier. If it is, if it, if it, looks good on another amputee does not mean it's going to work for you. And uh, uh, fake news, um, you, you know, an example of fake news uh, or, or, or maybe advertising, which is not so accurate, so what was uh, the, um, the example that we, 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 we had in the, in the magazine. For instance, uh, there was an amputee and he, he lost his one, his, his one hand. And this APT went to the ATM to draw some money. And he put in his card and he took his prosthesis and this, the prosthesis has got certain programs. So he can do this and he can do this and he can, he runs through the programs until he comes to the finger, the pointer. And then he puts his, with his sound, his normal hand, he puts the card into the machine. And then he, um, he puts in his pin into the machine with his prosthesis, with the pointy finger. Well, yeah, in the first place, the whole world now knows he's spin. <laughs> but on the other on the other hand, an amputee would never do that. Um, he would put it in with his with his hand and he would put the pen with his normal hand. So they are saying something um, which does not really require uh, bilateral ambidextrous movement. It doesn't require both hands to do that function. If it doesn't require both hands and a, a, a below elbow amputee, will always use his sound hand to do anything with. So it is not really fake. 
but but it is not really reflecting the truth because um and then the patient might watch this and see this and think wow this is great i've lost this hand i want a hand that can do that but even if you've got a hand that can do that you're never going to do that with that hand so yes that is a maybe an example and you know you can't really call it false information or misleading but it's just not correct that it's not the way it is going to play out yeah so you can maybe call it a half truth because there's truth in it but it's not the full truth um and i think that's so important that you also mentioned that there are also situations where some rehabilitation um processes can actually bypass the amputation so for example using um your functioning hand to to um fill, fill in your pen instead of uh, relying on the uh amputate the prosthesis <laughs> Um, then just my final question is, is there any good sources of news or information on prosthesis um, that South African amputees can trust for updates within the field if there's someone who's very interested in maybe new technology coming out, things like that? Yes, of course, the rolling inspiration. Just go and read all the articles that you wrote about the last 10 years on prosthetics and you will get amazing information and inside information of what is possible and what you can do. And I believe all those things are online. We have spent <laughs> hours and days putting all that together. So yes. Thank um, you for that little shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Running inspiration, MPT corner. Uh, we tried our best to give, we tried our best to give, um, to give good solid information through the years. So all those articles is, are great. Um, and then, of course, your reputable practitioners. Um, you can also trust, you know, just, 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 just what they tell you. Thank you so much, Heinrich. Um, again, I'm opening up the floor. So, if there's anyone who has any questions that they want to submit, um, anything that they would like to ask Heinrich, now is your chance to say to ask him his questions. Um, thank you so much from my side, Heinrich. It was really lovely to have you here and just to get some clarity on some of those points. Um, I think it's so important also that people just know that it's not always about figuring out whether or not the news is fake, but figuring out whether or not it might be a half truth. Um, so not telling you the full story. Um, and then also, of course, thank you so much for the shout out to Rolling Inspiration. Um, Heinrich is correct. The magazine is available online um, along with all of his back articles. So if you subscribe, um, you get access to the website. You can go back onto all of the amputee corner um, articles and actually go read up on some of these things. Um, so definitely, if you if you don't if you're not already, go subscribe. <laughs> um, and then also, we did have a comment from Emma, Sophie, and George for you as well. Um, just to know, she said thanks for an interesting webinar. COVID is new to all of us, so it's critical to take discussions along the way. So thank you so much, Emma, for that. And that's so true. Then Heinrich, I don't know if there's anything that which you would like to still say or something that you would like to end off on before we end the end the webinar. Mm. Yes. Um, if you have to deal with the amputation, maybe I can talk something about amputation because I'm a prosthetist here. But if you're going to, um, yeah, amputation is um, uh, is not the hardest thing uh, with today's components. It is not. It is. A, it is a mind game. So if you can, if you, especially for your more senior patients, if you can win it up here, then you can win it everywhere. Great. Thank you so much for that, Heinrich. Um, I see we don't have any questions on Facebook or on Zoom, so I'm gonna just say thank you to everyone for joining us, Heinrich. Thank you so, so much for joining us. We really appreciate it, and uh, we look forward to sharing your article in the next issue. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks to everyone.